Hello and welcome back to another Torah Tuesday. Today we're in Exodus chapter 2 verses 11 through 13 and we're looking at the adult Moses when he first takes action. Today's insights are quite striking. I hope you'll enjoy them. Uh, reading from my own translation in chapter 2 verse 11 it says, Now it happened in those days that Moses grew up he went out to his brothers and saw their burden bearing. He saw an Egyptian man striking a Hebrew man from among his brothers. So he turned this way and that, and he saw that there was no one. So he struck the Egyptian and hid him in the sand. So he saw the man striking and he struck him. So Moses is responding in kind to what he sees from this Egyptian. The next day he sees two Hebrew men quarreling and he asks them, why are you striking your companion? Again, the same word for striking. If we trace this word struck or strike through the rest of these narratives, we'll find something striking. It occurs over and over again. In chapter 3, verse 20, Yahweh tells Moses that he will strike Egypt and get the people out of there. So Yahweh plans a response in which the punishment fits the crime. In chapter 5, verses 14 and 16, it tells us that the overseers are striking the Hebrew workers. So it's not just the previous generation that had a striking problem. They're still striking the enslaved Israelites. When Moses comes back with Aaron and begins to unveil the plagues that God has sent on the land, we're told in chapter 7, that he is to strike the Nile with his staff and it turns to blood. In chapter 8, he strikes the dust and it becomes gnats. In chapter 9, the hail strikes the land. So these three times where we see strike in context of the plagues, we can see as warnings. God is warning and giving the Egyptians, giving Pharaoh time to repent and respond to his action and to see him for who he really is. But they don't respond. And so in chapter 12, verses 12 and 13, we're told that Yahweh will strike the firstborn of all the Egyptians and kill them. So the takeaway from all this is that when God is involved, the punishment fits the crime. But by his grace, God strikes the land first, giving people time to repent and time to respond. It's only because Pharaoh has a hard heart that it necessitates a stronger response on God's part. One more tidbit from this passage. It's interesting that we're told that Moses, when he sees the Egyptian striking the Hebrew back in chapter 2, it says he turned this way and that, and he saw that there was no one. When I heard that phrase, I thought that sounds awfully familiar. And so I did a search, and sure enough, in Isaiah 59, 16, it's speaking of Yahweh. And he's looking on the injustice of his people. He looks and he sees it and he sees that there was no one. And so he takes action himself to make things right. And we see this glimpse with Moses as he's an emerging adult. We see him acting the way God would act to respond to an injustice. It's a bit clumsy at first. His action to strike the Egyptian doesn't actually bring about systemic change. It's, it's a work in progress and it's going to take many years for God to work on him and bring him to the place where he can be effective in his work for justice. But we see a glimpse here that Moses shares the heart of God. I hope you enjoyed this. If you don't want to wait all the way till next Tuesday for another insight, you can check out my blog www.carmenjoyimes.blogspot.com. Have a great week!